I'm going to talk about grids and syncing them up with tempos. Um, sometimes I'll get this question as far as like when I bring a sample in, it's not working right with my master tempo, which is this here at the top right here. Um, more times than not, Serato does a good job of syncing samples um, to your master tempo. But sometimes, you know, it's not perfect. And this is how you can adjust and really know if you have it on lock. So what I'm doing is I'm actually going to the Serato demo tracks. Um, I'll actually put this up in the description so that you can mess with it as well. What I'm going to do just to kind of keep it a little bit easier is we're going to use the house track number two. I'm going to preview it so you can hear it. You need to adjust the preview volume. You have this right here. This little tab right here. I'm going to bring this up. Now, what you're going to notice is it's going to give you the track information here. BPM key. These BPM values of going double the time or half the time and sync and key and key sync to that. So our tempo here is 100 BPM. Our original tempo of our sample is 120. So if I go and since it's already made some cues for me or some chops, just for an example, I'm going to start at the one. This is our first one here. If I hit play with this metronome on. And I got to put it on one shot mode. There we go. We can hear that it's drastically slower, but it's in time with the tempo, which is super important. So say I want to raise this to 120 as far as this master tempo. I could click and move my mouse to 120. I could just type it in as well. Now we're at the original tempo. Everything's working with our metronome. Everything's fine. Sometimes though, you're going to run into situations where that's not the case. So I'm going to show you how this grid can be off if we're not careful or we're not paying attention. So I'm going to take this off here. So the window that you're looking for is this little grid icon right here. Right next to it is a little freeze icon. What that does is instead of it following along this timeline right here, it'll just freeze itself in position so I can do fine tune adjustments. Super helpful if you're trying to like really get on that downbeat or that transient that you're trying to go for. So again, I'm going to take this little option off, move our playhead over to the beginning. So let me delete this here. So when we go into this grid mode, let me delete this. There we go. We click on it. We get this little uh, set of grid lines that's going on. And because this is like a house track and made in a DAW, uh, more than likely it's going to be right on the hits. So this grid start is where you're going to start doing your gridding. So say I wanted to do the grid here. I was at the one. Sometimes the sample you might have is it has some silence at the beginning. So sometimes the grid starts here where there's like nothing. And sometimes there's where you can run into issues because it's not right on the first kind of transient. So to kind of make your life a little easier, you move this to here. So now it's straight down. So if I set the grid start there, it's going to line up all these for the most part. Cause as you can tell, this is off a little bit. This is off a little bit. So let me go back here, set my grid start. See how this kind of lined up, lined up, lined up. So say this one was kind of losing the grid. This is where this set comes into play. You can set another tempo marker. You can set one there. Say I go further in the track. Everything seems pretty good, but you're like, oh, actually I want to adjust this to here. And then I do set. So now everything over to this side is set to this marker and the previous one. So try to keep everything lined up. Say I go further into the track. Everything seems to be pretty good. You could manually adjust these little markers just to kind of get them a little closer. It stretches to match the audio files BPM. 
We also get these little identifiers at the very bottom down here. So if you look carefully, this kind of gives you a descriptor. So like if the tempo's right, but the grid's a little off, you can use these little whole B grid shifts on here. So say you have everything in line, everything's good, you can hit save and it'll save that. Now, say this tempo was completely off. Say this was, it registered it as like 105. You're going to see that all the grids are off. And when I play it here with the metronome, say I saved it. I'm going to remember that it's 120, but I save it as 105. It does change that. So just be careful. But now if I play this, the cue there, it's completely off. Like it just doesn't match. Like I'll even make it two bars so we can really hear the train wreck. I mean, it's all over the place. So we go to grid and then all our numbers are off. Now, what I could do is if I know how to count this, you know, sometimes we don't, but since this is the house beat, it goes one, two, three, four, two, 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 three, four. I'm like, oh, you know what? The two is right here. I need to move this to the left and pay attention to this right here. While I move this, you're going to see that BPM start to change and no coincidence when i get this to that second beat it's really close to 120. now i could really fine tune this more and more and more let me get it to there a little bit right on that i can fine tune it even more just kind of shifting it to there if I go up a little bit, I'm like, oh, 121 is a little too much. I'm just gonna move this over. Oops. Move this over. There we go. About right there. Again, you could just type in, I'm gonna do 120. If this seems a little off, it might be where my grid starts a little off. And see, my grid starts off. So I'm gonna reset that to there. 120, everything's lined up, and now I have it. Say it feels like it's a little off. You can always just kind of shift it a little bit. Again, you can fine tune this how you need to. So now if I go really fast in tempo, see how it stays in line with it? It's a stupid amount. And there you go. Again, it doesn't just have to be a house track. We can do it to a hip hop track too. So say we have this. Again, by default, it's gonna make these cues right here. So let me just play this. It's in time, but it does feel a little funky. Our BPM is 70. This is 121. If I hit grid, it says we're 70. So if I bring this down to 70 here, there we go. We also have these values here. If we did 140, sometimes it'll analyze it double the time where it's actually counting instead of one, two, three, four. It's going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So now watch if I save this like this. This is what tends to confuse some people as far as with this double time, half time situation. So this is absurdly slow. Because remember, we have this at 140. So if I bring this up to 140 on the master tempo, now it's feeling a bit more legit to that. And again, we can adjust these grids if we needed to. Say this hit felt a little off to us and we wanted it more here, I would set a marker there. Now it's going to approximate what it is here. 
But again, it's just by feel. We're trying to get it right on that edge on each one. If it feels like they're kind of being off a little bit, let me set my mark there. I could shift this over a little bit. And just kind of double check with the metronome. See if that's feeling fine. Again, if you feel like you need to adjust, you can. You can just shift over where you're just trying to get this to get right on each little transient hit. And also, don't forget to save. So once you feel like you have it, hit save, and it'll save that grid info. Again, sometimes you're going to get a sample that is brought in, will not match. Um, a good thing to just double check on, on certain um, sample packs you get, they'll have a tempo here laid out. This says like 124 BPM. So say, let's just bring this in. Registered 124. This register 124. Sometimes there's issues where you bring this in and this tempo is completely different. It might be 114. And you're like, wait a second, that's not right. So I'm like, okay, 124, double click, type 124. And then those grids should match up now. And then you just hit save on there. So yeah, this is a little, little uh, recap on doing uh, big grids. If you run into any issues, feel free to let me know. Um, again, I appreciate all the comments. And again, just here to help everybody out as much as I can. Enjoy the rest of your day, everybody. Peace out.